Welcome. Uh, I'm here with composer Inti Figus Vizueta. Such a pleasure to have you join us. And um, it's been a great thrill to work on your piece, Primavera Crown. Uh, of, of all the pieces that I've done this year, this piece is the most interesting in its notation and the explorator, or I should say that the process of exploring that is required for, for the ensemble. So tell me a little bit about your style of composing and about this piece. Totally, thank you. And yeah, I'm happy to be here and uh, so happy that y'all, um, yeah, uh, engage, with, engage with the piece. Um, yeah, the, you know, my work in general is kind of very collaborative. Um, and so uh, trying to kind of build in uh, places for folks to kind of have a lot of room to explore, um, to kind of figure out their role within a larger space, or I mean, both kind of uh, a larger ensemble as well as a larger sonic space, um, I think is like really, really important to me. Um, this piece uh, was after a bunch of chamber music um, where kind of some of those mechanisms are a little easier to control where you can kind of be like, okay, you listen to this person and like, you know, draw materials that way. Um, but with a kind of larger medium, um, I had to kind of, yeah, figure out some kind of fancy ways and some, you know, repeat this kind of material, but then how that material fits into everything is really kind of uh, based on based on where you are and what you're hearing and and the conglomerate space and all that. Um, so yeah, um, the piece was written for Alarm Will Sound. And so um, I was able to work with Alan Pearson like pretty closely in terms of uh, how to create kind of a really kind of simple system of conducting so that there was like this ability to have all that detail be kind of foregrounded um, as, as like you know, what tightening it would be or what, you know, going through a rehearsal process would be. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I want to just also ask you right here, Primavera Crown is an encounter between conflicting ethics of my work, the role of individual imagination, which is very strong in your piece as required by the players and expressive possibility against the large canvas of chamber orchestra. Yeah. And then you go on to say, I struggle from a philosophical perspective with the mechanisms and aesthetics I'm evoking in their connotations. I love this, but I'd like to just, just ask you to extrapolate a little bit so we know where you're coming from. Totally. So, so I mean, yeah, I think like when, when I'm writing, I'm really trying to kind of foreground the imagination uh, of players through structures that I'm building or through, uh, you know, frameworks of, of trajectory or, uh, you know, like you start here, you go here, but maybe this in-between part is kind of really um, up to you. Um, and so that, you know, having a lot of <laughs> vague in-between parts with so many players um, sometimes can, you know, maybe not make the most musical thing or the most clear thing. Um, and so kind of figuring out, um, you know, maybe, in a lot of ways, limiting more kind of the, I, I use this metaphor a lot of like a pinhole of like a certain technique or a certain, uh, you know, repetitive thing that you're using, but kind of all, all the potential around that thing being your kind of ability to engage with the ensemble. So for example, um, there's, you know, there's uh, in the winds, there's this co consistent thing where they kind of play one note and then they allow some air or they allow the note to kind of, uh, you know, kind of bend or warp or uh, become bigger or smaller or something. Um, and so having a bunch of people do that, uh, you know, at the same time, is a really kind of beautiful effect, but it's also something where they can kind of uh, interact in ways that I could never in, you know, in my wildest dreams imagine how to orchestrate that, like, right. know, as, um, as complexly. For um, sure. And then, and the result then is, um, is a texture that's constantly in a state of evolution. Um, so it's it's granular, uh, it, it's its density thickens and becomes more transparent. Um, and it actually, it, you're exactly right that what you're asking the player to do is to engage sonically or engage in listening to what's happening around them and find ways to appropriately um, add to it or subtract from it. It, it really is, it's, a, it's an ongoing improvisatory collaboration among the ensemble. 
hundred percent. And that's and that's kind of what what uh, that program note is kind of alluding to is that there's this um, there's this desire to create even in these really kind of small pockets um, that ability to have a kind of transforming or dynamic engagement with whatever kind of the technique is the uh, yeah um, or or their kind of individual engagement with the kind of ensemble um, conglomerate sound <laughs> um, or something, uh, you know? And so th that kind of also is like a social thing too. Like when you're kind of among, you know, you're among other players doing similar techniques, there's ways in which you can like lock into folks and, and break away from folks um, that also, you know, gives a kind of ongoing developing context um, for individual players. And, and I think that that is, that is where I saw some of that kind of freedom that I, I couldn't allow as much in terms of, I couldn't allow, but you know, I, in the, in the construction of the piece, um, I kind of had to limit the materials in order to kind of, uh, you know, allow there to be detail. But I think, uh, with those individual, uh, yeah. Um, but those individual choices still being able to kind of, uh, engage a lot of the, um, <laughs> a lot of the maybe philosophies that I, I try and bring to, to my music making and my collaborations and, and everything. It's been a great, um, it's been like a giant sandbox for the ensemble. And I, I really appreciate that. It's been a really fun piece to work on. And, and I'm sure that, that our listeners are going to love this. And I, I encourage you to take note of all of the fun toys that we get to play with. The chopsticks, the little plectrums, the flower pots. It's really fabulous. The harmonicas. So thank you for your beautiful music. Absolutely. And thank you again. Thank you.